All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the DJ Greg podcast. I'm glad you're here. Today's guest is another incredible DJ from the Generation Now Entertainment Company in Minnesota. He also spins at the Exchange and Alibi Lounge, the Poor House, Crave. He's all over downtown, man. This guy's making splashes everywhere. My man, DJ Matty Matt. What's happening, babe? Greg, what's up, brother? Good to I'm see good, you. man. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me, man. This is gonna be fun. Right on, right on. Hey, Matt, let's 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 take it from the top, man. How did you get started, DJing? Yeah. Did you go on the Gemini's and you know let's... back in the day? <laughs> no, <laughs> let's dive in. Uh, yeah, man. So it's a long story, dude. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Uh, I'll try to give you the bridge version, the the abridged version. But uh, so 2007, I'm living in Australia. Uh, I'm dating a girl who I met here. Moved down there because I had nothing going for me here in the States. I had nothing. I was like, forget it. I was uh, like 23, 24 years old at the time. Okay. So I moved down to Australia. I go down there. I'm working. I'm like, man, I love music. I was always in bands growing up. I was a drummer uh, throughout my youth. And then into my you know, early 20s and everything, I was in bands and I was a drummer and I loved it. But then some of the bandmates had kids. They got married. They had a family. And so the band broke up and I was like, man, I still love music. And so uh, down in Australia, I saw an ad in the paper, they're hiring for a DJ. So I said, all right, let's try it. So I go into it. I did a little bit of DJing in high school. Not much, man. I was just messing around with CDs and just messing around with like six disc changers, you know, yeah. like the old, the old slot changes, you open it up and then you just put the CDs in there and then you shut it and then slam it in the deck and Right. Yeah. And then I had a little two channel pioneer uh, mixer from Radio Shack, just a cheap, 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 cheap mixer, <laughs> just like a $50 mixer, man. It was, it was garbage. And the, and the fader knobs on it and everything were just like moving glue. I mean, it was just like stuck mm -hmm. in glue. Dude. It was just, it was terrible. But I tried it and it was fun and whatnot. Uh, so I got this job with this wedding company in Australia called Moby Disc. <laughs> shit you not the name of it is moby disc moby like, disc like moby dick yeah whale, right oh man so uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like forget it man i love music i want to try this let's let's go for it so i go to this right. wedding they say show up at this venue on saturday night and introduce yourself to the dj and say you're here for training i said okay so i show up and i say hello i'm here i'm just showing up to this random person's wedding I'm, I don't know anybody. I just mm. go up to the DJ and go, hey, man, I'm your trainee for the night. And he goes, oh, okay, here you go. Hands me the headphones and tells me what to play. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, fine. So they have a setup of three portable discmen. Okay. So like okay. Sony disc, right? Oh. So portable CD players set up. And then they have a three-channel mixer and an amplifier and then two speakers sitting on the floor. And then like two oh. lights, like mushroom lights, like sitting on top of the speakers. Yeah. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> so first off, you don't understand how sound works because your speakers are on the floor. Second of all, you're using portable disc, man. And third, you got one light with a mushroom light. I mean, it's like, it just looks like garbage, but I took the job, man. And I did right a on. good job. I got the job and I, you know, got my equipment, started working down there. Um, I ended up breaking up with that girl, moved back to the States in 2009. Okay. Um, Obviously, the, ec the economic state of things in this country were not good at that time. Uh, it was mm -hmm. you know, into a recession and all this other stuff. And so I couldn't find a job. I found um, this bar attached to a law firm that my mom worked for at the time. And she knew the owner because the owner of the bar was the lawyer who was in charge of the law firm. So it's, it's, oh, it's wow. a really weird situation. It's in Northfield, Minnesota. It's called Froggy Bottoms River. Okay. Uh, so it's attached to this law firm and downstairs is this bar. It's a towny bar. It's Northfield, Minnesota. It's a small town, but they have two liberal arts colleges in the town. They have Carleton College and St. Olaf College. And on Thursday nights, they have a, uh, they had a karaoke DJ night. And uh, they basically said, we see that you have DJ on your resume. I applied to be like a bar back, bartender, whatever, just sling drinks. I can pour a beer. So, okay. but, uh, but they go, nope, uh, we saw you had DJ in your resume. Would you like to 
come in here and DJ on our karaoke night, our college night, and, and see if uh, it works out. And I said, sure, why not? And it eventually worked out. And things just snowballed. I ended up getting Friday nights, Saturday nights at this bar. Ended up to get to know a lot of the townies. And it was a very small town. And so everybody knew everybody. And you mingled with everybody. I mean, it was a very tight-knit community. And um, it was a great nightlife. I mean, everybody that came out always came out. It was always reliable. You'd see the same 50 to 100 people every single night. And so they got really used to my DJing and, and put up with my terrible mixing skills at the time. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, eventually, uh, in 2011, I entered a DJ competition in Minneapolis at Envy Nightclub. I saw it on Facebook, on their Facebook page, and I said, what the hell, I'll try it out. Hit up the promoter for the event, and I said, hey, man, I DJ down in Northfield, college parties, this and that. I do house parties, college parties, bars, all this other stuff. And uh, he goes, yeah, man, I'll put you on the bill. I was like, all right, cool. So I got on the bill. I brought like 25 people up from Northfield. We came in, played in the back room of Envy Nightclub. And uh, I guess I won the competition. I don't really know. There really <laughs> wasn't a clear winner. Uh, they but- didn't give you a trophy? No trophy, no nothing, man. And, and it was very light, low key. And I was just like, all right, what is this? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> but uh, I brought people out. They danced. I played a set. And the owner of the club at the time, the, the ownership had just changed at Envy from a very prominent owner in the business in Minneapolis, who is Deepak. Uh, it's a famous thing. You say, I know Deepak. Um, he's a very prominent uh, owner of nightclubs in Minneapolis. And so he had just uh, sold his ownership to this woman and she enjoyed my set. And she said, we'd like you to come back. I said, sure. Sounds good. Whatever. And then on Monday nights, the following Monday, I came back into that club and uh, I had gotten to know one of the residents that was there who was running sound for us that night at the uh, battle. And uh, he, his name's CT, uh, Koto. And mm-hmm. he's, uh, he's part of Level 11 Entertainment. He was. Okay. Uh, who is another large entertainment company in Minneapolis here. And uh, he said, hey, man, I have this company. If you're interested and you would like to work for us, we do mitzvahs, we do corporate events, we do weddings. I said, okay, yeah, sure. Obviously, I'm like, yeah, man, absolutely. I'd love to. So um, took that job with him and... It just, it's, it's snowballed from there, man. It's really okay. since 2011, man, it's been a nonstop roller coaster ride up and down mm-hmm. waves of, you know, years of greatness, years of like, should I still be doing this? <laughs> um, right. You know, uh, but in 2014, I made the leap into the deep end of the pool and I just said, screw it, let's do it. I went full time and okay. stopped having a day job, stopped having uh, that worry of like, I need two, three jobs to keep this afloat, you know? No, I just dived. I just dove in. I said, forget it. Let's go. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> I took every gig and opportunity I could possibly take, man. And I think that's one important thing that I try to tell other DJs that are trying to get to a point where I am at, to a point where Dudley D is at, to a point where man Mardigan is at, when you want to get to that level, man, and I'm not trying to be arrogant about it, but I'm just trying to say like, when you want to get to that point in a career, if you really truly love something, you have to take every opportunity that comes your way, whether you like it or not. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. I, say, I, I, yeah. Say yes to everything. Yeah, man. Uh, you never know where it's going to lead, especially in this business. I mean, mm-hmm. There's a ton of gigs that I took that I never knew where it was going to lead. There was, um, so my Mall of America gigs, for example. Yeah. Where I play in the Rotunda. That's where I first saw you. Yep. So in the Mall of America Rotunda, where, you, where I play a lot, I've been there for five, six years now. And nice. I just got through a random chance. I had handed my business card at some point to somebody who worked at the mall. I don't remember. But mm-hmm. they got my information from that business card and I checked my spam forward one day and I see like five emails from the mall of America. And I'm like, what the heck mm-hmm. asking for DJ services? And I'm like, Oh shoot. Cause it went all to my spam folder. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh no, these are gigs I could have had. So I immediately emailed them back. I said, Hey, I'm so, so sorry. I just saw that these emails from like a couple months ago, you guys were looking for a DJ, you know, if you're ever looking for somebody again, please, you know, contact me here. You know, this is my, you know, most appropriate email and contact information and just get at me. Right. And 
they got back to me and they said, yeah, absolutely. We have this event going on or whatever in the rotunda. And I said, let's do it. So, mm. and it's, it's been a great relationship with them since, um, I think it's 2015. I was starting there 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. Um, okay. I've been doing mall of America gigs in the rotunda and it's been a blast. I mean, that's just one gig that you never know where it's going to turn, man. Yeah. I mean, you never know. Um, how it's going to turn out. And there's other guys that are coming in there. There's other guys that play the rotunda. I'm not the only guy. Um, there's, uh, uh, I forget the name of the company, but his name's uh, Brian. He DJs in the rotunda from time to time. I know that other DJs have played there. It's not like it's, mm -hmm. you know, my gig and I'm in charge, you know, it's not my residency or anything. It's just a one-off kind of thing where it happens mm -hmm. to pop up every couple months. They call me up and say, Hey, let's go. Cool. That's but, really cool, man. Because that, yeah, know, man. that that's where I first saw you, and and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I, in fact, I was on my way out of the mall, and I said, yo, let me just stay here for a minute because like he's playing the right stuff, he's grooving, he's mm -hmm. he's on the right vibe, and mm -hmm. and I think I stood over there for an hour trying to get your attention and you know try to give you like the thumbs up or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> no. It's like I Bro. see people all the time. It's like there's people. <laughs> It all the time you know it i know yeah so <sighs> sorry man <laughs> no, it's all good man what kind of equipment are you rocking right now though by the way uh so right now for my uh setup is still the pioneer plx 1000s uh turntable and the s9 it's such a solid setup man i yeah. love the s9 that's i was uh I love the Rain 62. I had that. Mm -hmm. um, and for a short period of time, I used Tractor. I think it was 2015 to 20, like end of 2016. I used Tractor for like a year because yeah. I saw uh, Qbert used Tractor. And mm -hmm. I was like, yep. oh man, okay, so I'll try this out. So I had a Z2 mixer with the turns. Tractor is a wonderful program. And if you use it, use it, man. It's, it's a great, right. great platform. But the problem was, the clubs I was playing at, the mixers I was using at the clubs, mm -hmm. all had Serato. Right. So I was like, man, I got to drag my Z2 mixer in here if I really want to play on my tractor. Mm -hmm. So I just was like, forget it. Let's just go back to Serato. Fine. You know, and <laughs> Serato's not a bad program, man, but it has definitely crashed on me a couple times in key moments of a gig. And mm. it's not the greatest feeling in the world, man. I mean, it's peak hour at the club and it's crashed. Yeah. You know, I've good. had it. And, and you got two, three, four minutes, five minutes of silence because you got to restart your laptop. You got to reload your hard drive. You got to, yep. you know, I mean, it's, it sucks. Yeah. It's like, but it's it, the industry standard, you know. But It uh, is. It is. For the longest of time, it's always been an industry, uh, industry standard. Mm -hmm. Also, I see, you know, record box. I'm a virtual yeah. DJ user, always used it. Okay. You know, I used virtual DJ in the beginning. Um, yeah. When I first started to get into digital DJing and I got off the CDs, um, I never actually did full DJing on wax. I never did. Um, mm. in, the, in fact, I never did turntables up until uh, like 2011. Okay. I was doing the controller mode because I thought that the controller market was going to be the next wave of DJ. I thought that was going to be the thing. Yes. In like 2010, 2011, 2009, like in that era, Newmark started to come out with a lot of controllers and products. And there was like Vestex and all this other, these right. other controller market people. And I was like, man, this is looking like the wave of the future. Uh -huh. And so I bought a Newmark NS6, which is like one of those little controllers, four channel, two little platters that are like tinier than a donut, yeah. you know, it's just <laughs> tiny little platters. And I'm like, all right. And I rocked with that man for a while. And then, Eventually, um, I went to turntables uh, once I started to work with Dudley a lot. And okay. he's like, you better learn this. And I said, all right, man, I'll learn. <laughs> you know, I mean, I had turntables as a kid, but I never actually like mixed on them. I never cut, scratched, did anything. Right. Like, and so all my cutting and scratching and, and all the uh, skills that I've learned th since that time have been just self-taught and watching and listening to other DJs. And I never went to like a scratch school. I never went to a you know mm -hmm. a tutorial like how to scratch no man i just i listen to my ear you know through my ear and i just go all right man that's what it's supposed to sound like all right cool and i know what sounds good and i know what doesn't sound good because it's yeah. just you that you've de you know you develop that musical ear of what it should sound like you know 
Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and even with the mixing, I mean, like, mm -hmm. if you listen to uh, what a DJ does and what it sounds like, how he brings in the effects or scratches, yeah, you'll, you'll eventually catch on if you do put those like 10,000 hours in to, yeah. uh, to, to make sure that you actually get it. Yep. You know what I mean? How did you meet the uh, Generation Now DJs, though? Yep. So that was, that was through Dudley. Um, okay. He and I worked together for a good probably two years. You know, me opening for him, uh, me taking some gigs for him because he couldn't do them. And he's, he talked to Martigan one night. And so what happens is Dudley gives me a call. He goes, hey, man, come over to my house. Mm -hmm. It's like 10 o'clock at night, okay. <laughs> like a Wednesday. <laughs> it's just like random call. Like, come over to my house, man. It's like, geez, man. At the time, I mean, I lived like 30, 30 minutes away from him at the time. And I was like, man, all right, fine. So I hopped in the car. I go over there. And uh, his house is like pitch black. He goes, come to the backyard. I was like, what the hell is going on here, man? <laughs> like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> the setup. Yeah. <laughs> so I go in the backyard. He's at, at his deck. And, and uh He's got a little fire going, and there's another guy sitting with him. And mm -hmm. I go up to him. I'm like, okay, what's up, guys? You know? And it's Martigan. So it's him and Martigan just sitting okay. there by the fire, chilling, having a drink, having a smoke, you know, whatever, you know, but uh, <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah. Doing our thing. And, uh, and he just goes, okay, man, well, we got a proposition for you. And I was like, okay, what's up? And he goes, you want to join Jen now? And I was like, shit, you serious? And I said, yeah, obviously, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Right. And, and this, is, uh, this is like 2014. This is just after I had gone full-time. And this is like the end of the summer of 2014. And right. uh, we're coming up on the, the basketball season, the Timberwolves and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had done a couple of filling gigs at the Wolves. I had known Mart again. And, and – not like known him, but I had interacted with him a couple of times and yeah, at that point. And, and so he basically just said, yeah, man, you want to join? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I signed up and they said at the time I was working with level 11 still doing mm -hmm. it was in corporate events. And I, and I basically had to make the decision. Do I stay with level 11 who has been very loyal to me for the last couple of years? And I have a good friend, you know, they're all good friends, you know, CT Sarge, Dave bear, Right. I mean, those guys, I got to give props to because they really did open some doors in the private sector of DJing for me. Nice. And, um, you know, the connections I made because of that, I mean, obviously I'm thankful to them, but I had to make that decision. And I was, you know, looking mm -hmm. at Jen now and, and Jen now really wasn't where they are at today, uh, but they, I could see where they were going as far yeah. as the sports market, mm -hmm. as far as corporate events as far as you know where we were going to take off to and and so i said this is a good business decision to join jen now mm -hmm. so i joined up and that fall i immediately started getting into the rotation uh for the timberwolves games and yeah. um obviously i'm not the only guy out there martigan's there dudley's there uh mm -hmm. we've got you know five six other guys that play at the team at the wolves games i mean we all rotate through there man right right so, i've seen i've seen all of y'all play yeah. Because yeah. at the time I was a season ticket hold, holder. Okay. I saw Marlinger first. Uh, you know, I saw Dudley. I saw you. Mm -hmm. You know, here I am, like, tapping your shoulders. Like, this guy, get away from me. Like man. DJ Creeper, man. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is a creeper. Oh, man, no. It's, oh, it's, it's creeping me out. <laughs> so, so that, like I said earlier, I mean, it's, it happens. I mean, it's, it's okay. So, I mean, it's, it's a hard thing for us DJs to find that perfect point to approach another DJ because right. some DJs mix differently, man. I mean, some guys will have that window of opportunity for five minutes because they just let the songs ride. Some right. other guys keep the cans on. And to me, if your can is on, you're like, if, so for me, I keep my headphones on my neck and then I just use my ear. Yeah. Some guys keep it one on, one off kind of thing, oh. you know. But if I know that your cans are on or you're listening, if you're doing something, man, that's that's a nonverbal communication to me or to the other person, like, yo, I'm busy. You know, yep. but if if my cans are just around my neck and I'm just staring at my screen, 
like, dude, I, most times I'm searching for music at that point, or my brain's just kind of thinking like, all right, where do I want to go? Two, three songs ahead, you know? Right. But I think that's an approachable situation, you know, but as long as the cans aren't being utilized, you know, I mean, I think you can, I think it's, it's fair to approach, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but but if, yeah. If, if the guy's head's down and he's like not looking at you, then it's like, yo, right, he's leave busy. him alone. He's busy. You know? Let him do it. Uh, he'll, yeah. you know, cause it's not like I can't see people. It's not like I can't look out the corner of my eye and I see, you know, a guy staring at me, but it's like, you know, it's just a matter of when I can find that moment in my mix to kind of be like, all right, I can take away a minute here and yeah. let this song ride and chat with the, the guy for a minute and then get back to it. But right. some guys, you know, it's, it's hard to find that window with some of us, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. No, you just got to know it. when they're busy and, and when, and when they just chill and lay, you know, laying back for a second, because you're mm -hmm. playing in front of, you know, 15,000, 18,000 people, man. There's a lot to like think about. It's pressure. Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of pressure. That, in fact, that's, <laughs> that's what I caught you. That's what I caught you. I just let you do your thing. I think I was standing behind you. And yeah. you were getting the green light to go on. And mm -hmm. you was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of pressure. I remember mm -hmm. you saying that, but you went on, you did your thing. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you know, you ran through your set flawlessly. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, yeah, it's dude, those those moments. I mean, I, I do uh, USA Gymnastics too for Generation Now. We started that up in 2018. Okay. And so the role in that is music director slash DJ. So when uh, doors open, you're DJing and you're okay. playing doors open music. You're, you're, you're just jamming. You're, you know, you're playing the Bruno Mars. You're playing the, you know, the PG rated music. You're not exactly. playing anything crazy because you're in an, you're in an arena. You know, you, you can't you can't play the club stuff. So right. it's, it's, it's what it is. But in that moment, you're DJing, you're, you're building the energy up in the arena, which is a crazy thing mm -hmm. to have that pressure. And that's a situation I never, ever imagined I would ever be in in my life as a DJ. Like never in a million years did I say, I want to play arenas. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah, yeah. No, never on my radar. Right, no, like 200, me. 300 people, cool. You know, now we're yeah. talking about oh, you know, 10,000. Yeah. You know, no, fit, like, no, just give me 50 people in a nightclub, man. I'm happy. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> that's fine. Because I can just rock that room and, and make those people have fun and make it like a house party. But like, 19,000 people sitting in an arena. Yeah. Are you going to grab every single one of those people's attention? Not at all. You know, and, right. and, and are, you know, 60% of those people not going to be listening to? Yeah. 60% are going to be like, who cares? Whatever. Right. But there are certain people in that, in that setting that are going to pay attention and they're going to listen and they're going to critique and they're going to, you know, and right. you got to kind of have to like block that out of your head and just kind of trust your, your instinct and trust your, your experience and just go with it. And man, but it is a high pressure situation playing in those settings. And, and obviously it's uh it's, it's a rush, man. It's a rush. Oh, to do I bet. That. I bet. I've seen, I've seen Dudley play, uh, you know, for instance, I've seen him play during the practices yep. and, and he's more like into, you know, the hip hop and what's going on urban wise. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when it gets to the game, it's more dance. Like you said, mm -hmm. it's more PG rated. You know, yep. mix in di you mix in different genres, like, you know, maybe a couple mm -hmm. of rock songs, 70s, mm -hmm. disco, mm -hmm. you know, whatever's going on at the moment so that you catch those different age groups throughout the evening. Yeah. So, yeah, yep. man, you, you, you definitely have to be on your game for that. Yeah, and that's what, uh, I mean, we're following the format of Mardigan with that. When we do that in the in arena DJ, Mm -hmm. uh, when we fill in for that. So I'm a fill in, Dudley's a fill in, and then obviously Mardigan's the main guy. So when Mardigan can't do it, Dudley will do it. When Dudley can't do it, I'll do it. So that's kind of the hierarchy of how it goes. I'm kind of like the stepbrother, you know, <laughs> like the little stepbrother. <laughs> <laughs> but, but which do you like doing? Do you like, you know, rocking events like, like weddings or corporate parties or, or are you more uh, like a club guy? I'm a club guy, man. I... I've done the wedding circuit. I've done weddings. I've done over, you know, 100, 150 weddings. I mean, I, I've done a ton. And yeah, honestly, man, I, I told uh, Tim Miller, a marketing guru for, mm -hmm. uh, I told him in 2016, 2017, I want to say, I've been doing weddings for Jen now for a couple of years. And, and I said, man, this ain't where my heart's at. I really don't like weddings. Unless the client specifically requests me, 
then mm-hmm. please don't get anybody. You know, because I can't vibe with that person. You know what I mean? I, I have to come into a situation where not only can I make you comfortable as the client, but I can also make myself comfortable so that I can mm-hmm. just have that free reign to be, you know, that DJ and that artist that you want to be. If right. I have to appear and play country music, for example, bro, it's not my thing. <laughs> it's not my thing. I can't two step with you. I can't two step with you. I can't, with you. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> we'll be unless, we'll, unless when we I get off, you. I'll tell you a story about that. Okay. <laughs> unless I know you. Unless I know you right, and you're a friend you. of mine and your family or your friend or your your uh, acquaintance that I've known in the business. Fine, I'll play your country music. But <laughs> if I don't know you and you want me to play an entire country set, get out of here. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm not doing it. I <laughs> but I'll drop, I'll drop fifteen hundred on you, man. Yeah, no, five thousand. No amount. No amount. No, <laughs> no amount. amount. <laughs> For my own dignity and my own, my own, like just oh, my sanity, man. Just to have my sanity about me to not just have to listen to some dude screaming about his truck and his dog and his woman leaving him with a can of beer. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't do it. Oh, man. Yo, man, you're <laughs> killing me, man. I can't do it. <laughs> so, like, when COVID hit, though, you know, of course, it shut everything down, you know, country bars, <laughs> yeah. everything, clubs. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, how, what did you do to, like, you know, at least stay afloat skill-wise? Uh, stay afloat, man. I didn't do shit for two weeks. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. I didn't do anything, man. Nothing. I didn't do Here's Here's why. Yeah. I've been grinding nonstop for right over a decade. You know, I'm 13 years into this game and I, I would say for a solid 10 years, I have been nothing but grinding, networking, talking to people, working gigs, mm-hmm. taking every opportunity that comes to me. So I took two weeks and I just relaxed, man. I have two young daughters. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Yes. And uh, so, you know, myself and my significant other, we just, obviously the, the, pressure of what's going to happen was there over the head. But for two weeks, man, I just, I really just tried to relax and and just stay home and enjoy my family and and really take a break. Yeah. Um, And then obviously you get that itch, you know, you you want to get back into it. Mm -hmm. And and so it started the live streaming and then I started researching, you know, Twitch and how to, um, you know, get the proper setup. I ordered a green screen. I ordered, you know, all this other stuff that I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to need because this is the future basically for now. Right. It's a streaming platform. So I did Facebook live stuff. I did a little bit of Instagram live, not much. Mm-hmm. I found that my reach was better on Facebook. So I did, uh, it's like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of thing. Right. And eventually Facebook started to hit me with the copyright stuff. And basically I said, you know, enough of this. I'm not doing right. it. I went to Twitch. I set up a Twitch account because Twitch doesn't mute you. You know, Twitch doesn't get at you. But right. the problem that I found with Twitch was that people just don't want to click that link. They just don't want to jump over to another website. Yeah. You know, because typically they're on their phone, they're browsing through Facebook or whatever, and they're watching on their phones. They're not watching on their on their PC or their laptops for the most part. Yeah. And so to click another link to another browser or another source people just don't want to do it, man. Mm -hmm. It was a really hard thing to push people over to Twitch and it just wasn't working out. And I was going, man, there's like four or five viewers on my Twitch thing, but I would get like 50 to a hundred people watching on Facebook. Right. You know, so I'm like, Oh my gosh, I I just, I couldn't do it because I got slapped with too many uh, uh, copyright infringements and I just had to stop it. You know, I had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I had to slow down a little bit too though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I sneaked a little bit in last night. Though. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you quick mix it uh, fast enough so the bots don't get you? Because that's the thing is that you got to quick mix it within 30 seconds. It's in, out, in, out. Yeah. You yeah. Uh, you know, I, I got boxed out. Uh, I, actually, yeah. I thought I was going to get boxed out uh, 15 minutes into it, but it let me go for about okay. a half hour. So I was mm. cool. I was happy with it. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still getting uh, uh, copyright infringement uh like we're researching this video and it's like yeah. three months i'm still getting stuff yeah yeah so i you know you get those 
uh, you know, your your video has been partially muted, and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's <laughs> you know that that's going to happen. But at least they know that you know that you're still out there doing your thing. You know what yes. I mean? And, yes. and of course, you as a DJ, like you said, you get the itch for it. It's like, man, I, I just want to, oh, yeah. you know, throw on a dope set and just go for sure. it. Man. There's know? some nights, there's some nights I come down to my office here and I, and I just, I'm looking at my decks. I'm like, some nights I'm like, I, I just, I have to get it out of my system. You know, right. I, I just, I have to do this. And, yep. and it's just, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, un, it's inexplainable. I mean, you really, I can't explain it. It's, it's just a feeling that comes over you and you're just like, I, I need to play some tribe. I need to play some, you know, some just old school hip hop right now. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's in you, you know, yeah. it's just in you. Or a new song come out. It's like, yo, I want to take mm -hmm. this new song and I want to yeah. pop this in the mix, you know? Yep. I'll be honest with you, Greg. I yeah. haven't listened to new music in like three months. For real? <laughs> yes. For real, we're gonna have another conversation. Oh, about that. We'll bro, I, I've it's, it's, it's I've, not such a bad thing, though. You know, I've, I've mean? had to, I've had to disconnect from it for a while because I'm telling you, with girl, like groups like City Girls, yeah, Megan the Stallion, yep. I'm just like, man, I can't same do thing. It. I can't do it. I can't listen to the same hip hop artists. Like it just sounds all the same right now to me. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of the time of the EDM bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Like 2010, 2011, 2012, and then it bursts because right. everything was starting to sound the same. Yep. Everybody's trying to be Drake right now. Everybody's trying to be J. Cole right now. Everybody's yep. trying to be these guys that, you know, obviously have solidified themselves in the game. But, I mean, I listen to guys like The Baby, and I'm just like, man. Yeah, it's a banging track. Suge is a banging track. Right, right, right. I love that track. It's a great track, but it's like you're a one-hit wonder, man. I mean, really. I mean, what are you gonna do after this? And it's just, I look. Yeah. You know, some of it's just like, yeah, maybe it could work, but in the settings where I play, it, it just doesn't really work, man. I play top forty open format. Like, it, right, right. How am I gonna get away with an all hip hop set of current hip hop? Like, where am I gonna play to do that? You know, that's, that's handled yeah. by a lot of the other guys in the city, like DJ Ones and uh, Ray Mills and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Peter Parker and uh, D Mill. Right. I, I mean, those guys have that on lock and they play that stuff at seven. They play that stuff at, uh, you know, places where, where it goes. I mean, but places like the poorhouse, oh man, I'm not getting away with that. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not getting away with 65 BPM hip hop. No way. Wow. No okay. Way. So it's gotta be like 120 it's it's dude it's party it's a party bar yeah you know yeah. it's sing, it's sing-alongs it's party bar it's, yeah you know it's it's music they know and obviously people know you know the baby they know megan the stallion and mm -hmm. so megan the stallion works and all that kind of stuff that stuff works but right you can't get away with some of the the more obscure hip-hop in that community as far as like they may know it in their car and on their spotify playlist mm -hmm. But in the club, they're not going to get down to it. You know, it's it's really just trying to find that that happy medium where this is a club song and then this is not a club song. Right. And some people think like this is a club song. It's like no, no, no that's not. Mm -mm. That's too low, low energy, man. It's like right, it's right. not. What? How are you going to get down to that? How are you going to dance? And some it works at like places like Monarch. It works. Uh, in Seven, it works. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. at at Crave, it works. But it's just it's it depends on the venue you're playing and yep and the crowd yeah and, and so that's why just a lot of the new music lately man I just I haven't listened <laughs> just, I think the last new track that I listened to like really liked was Doja Cat say so yeah see that's funky I love that I like, that I, like, 10, I like fifteen range yeah I, I like I like I I love that the fact that it's you know. Up at, up at that tempo at 110, 111. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I like the funk that goes along to it. It kind of reminds me of, of a good funk song back in like mid 90s, mm -hmm. you know, or, or yeah. 80s, I should say. It sounds more like an 80s tune. Sure. Because it has that funk, it's, it's, it's driven by that funky bass line and those yep. claps. So, yes. So mm -hmm. that, that's what I love about it, you know? Yep. It, you know, it makes you want to, like, you know, Roller yeah. skate, you know, roller yes. skate boogie. Yes. That's all Dude. it is, man. Ooh. Man, I love it. No, I, there's a lot of, like, a lot of the music, man, I don't even listen to the lyrics. I'm more of a beat-oriented guy. Yeah. So the beat, 
if, if that beat is just banging, dude, I'm going to play it. Right. Um, the lyrics I, I are like a second nature thing because so many of them are repetitive in pop music and uh, mm -hmm. hip hop and everything. It's, it's very repetitive. And so it's like, I'm not really listening to the lyrics other than the hook. And, okay. you know, I mean, that's basically the only part of the song that I'm going, all right, that's cool. So I'll mix like the hook I'll mix. Um, and there are like specific on record pools, like uh, club killers that I subscribe to mm -hmm. um, beat junkies record pool where it's the hook only edit. Right. So it's really nice. So it's already cut up for you and you just cue point it and you go straight from the hook and then you can just, you can get in and out of the tracks a lot faster than having to kind of listen through and, pick your points and, and listen through the bs of the track that just right, right. Like you know, the right way yeah like, I, I got i gotta get some more of those myself though so just yeah give, give, you know give me like an intro and mm -hmm. the chorus and then give me an yep. outro and then we can go on to the yep. next song yep it, it works so much easier man and especially for quick mixing and um mm -hmm. yeah cue points by the way are just you have to have cue points <laughs> if you yeah. don't got them it's just like what I feel like if you're not mixing with cue points, man, it's it's not right because it's just if you got one cue point in a track that's a banging track, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. You you got to chop it up. You got to find those spots that work, and um, I just think that's really important to do. Yeah, Super they may important. there may be a chant in in the song, and maybe you just want to get to that chanting line right away, or if you get mm -hmm. through like a key part, like like say if you're playing humble and you want to hit that part, you know. You know, my, my, <laughs> I changed the words to, you know, my, my show just went viral. You know, you want to get yeah. to that part of humble yeah, right yeah, away, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, yep. you got to cue that part up for sure. Cause everybody repeats that. Yeah. Or, and, or and like and God's the, plan, you know, do you really love yeah. me? I've been only partly blah, blah, blah. Yep. So that, Dude, the, yeah. one, the one thing when Lizzo was hot with truth hurts. Um, yeah. So the one thing I would go was from uh, humble, my, Last shit just went viral. Yeah. And I would let that echo out. And then I would drop right into the piano part for Truth Hurts when it was oh, hot. that's dope. And so it would, the crowd would just lose their shit. Because oh, obviously, yeah. Because obviously at that point, Truth Hurts was massively popular. And right. so, and Humble still had that, that vibe that people knew it and they mm -hmm. could get down to it. And then, so it worked out where it was a nice little transition. And um, yeah, I mean, stuff like that, the wordplay is important, man. Yep. Not enough DJs do wordplay right now, man. And it's it's a little thing that probably 90% of the crowd's not going to get. They're just, they're not going to understand the wordplay. But hmm. it's that little, that little uh, skill that a DJ should really utilize, man. I mean, wordplay is super important, man. You can run so many songs together that tell a story. Right, exactly. You know, and I, and I, I, just, I need to get into more of that myself too, though. Yeah, uh, I, I just, I feel like it's a skill that's kind of gone away. And I, and I feel like, um, you know, too many DJs are, are worried about playing that, that banger track, like right away, you know? Oh, <laughs> just, yeah. But, I, but, you know, but, but when you get to that banging track, I mean, if you play it right away, you got to follow it up to even more banging tracks. He's like, I know I just <laughs> played the track, but how am I going to follow it up? So if I'm at a mm -hmm. wedding or, and if I play, yeah. All right. Well, how am yeah. I going to follow that up? You know, yep. that, that, depending on the crowd, it could be challenging. Yes, and for lack of a better better term, man, it's going to get a little graphic. But don't bust your nuts so early. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like it. Yep, I like don't it. Don't bust your nut early. You so know, save you, it, save yeah, it, make save them want it, right make time. them want it, build it, right. make them want that shit. Because right, right, right. if you don't do that. Man, if you bust it early and you can't follow that up, then right. you better be praying because you're, you're gonna lose that dance floor. You're done. You're done man. When, <laughs> when, right. when is the Maddie Mac school of DJing coming though? Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> <laughs> More like the Maddie Mac complaining school. Maddie oh, Mac man. complaining school. <laughs> Yo, Matt, before we get out of here, man, what's your meaning yeah. of success? The meaning of success, man, for me is doing what you love. And if you can just make a life out of it, man, if you can make, if you can keep a roof over your head, food on the table and do what you love, man, that's success. And you know, it's a, it's a hard road to get to it. I think you got to grind, man. You got to grind. And especially in this game, there's so many DJs in this world, man. So, so many, and you got to just, you got to weed through it, man. You just have to, right. 
you have to in order if you want to be successful man you got to stay at it man you got to stick with it even in the down times like right now it's so hard man like i have definitely questioned myself i have definitely looked in the mirror and looked at my reflection and gone man do i really want to keep doing this do i really want to keep grinding do i really you know i got two young kids i you know i got to provide a future for them and right now there's no future for my career in, you know like a permanent future you know a solidified future like right. we used to have and so you know just maintaining that positivity and um trying to stay on your course man it's super important to do man super important but, and i think that'll in turn be successful if you have your passion and your love behind it you know right and support know. yeah it's super important man right on man I yeah i don't it. know <laughs> yeah but uh yeah i don't know gen now dj is great it's been a fun time but i don't know like y'all keep and, pocketing you know, it's been good but uh yeah i mean tons of sports gigs never thought i'd be there in a million years i mean i never thought i'd be playing at you know stadiums never thought i'd be you know rocking anything for sports things man never thought that but um uh, you know on top of that it's just snowballed into nightclubs and getting to know people and just growing the community and it is it's just a freaking ride man it's crazy it's crazy right on. what it's turned into right on it's well matt before we also before we go one more thing if mm -hmm. people want to get in contact with you yep. how do they do that where you at man holler at me holler, holler back, at yo. Ooh, holler <laughs> back. um i don't know man it's <laughs> It's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's, uh, let's see, Instagram, what are we, DJ Matty Matt, MPLS, the abbreviation for Minneapolis, and then uh, Facebook, DJ Matty Matt, 8-3. Um, but I don't go on Facebook much, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't do Facebook much. <clears throat> I hear you, player. I try to stay off, man. Dude, this whole COVID time, I've been trying so hard to get rid of my Facebook, but I just, I know from a promotional standpoint, it's mm -hmm. necessary from a marketing standpoint it's necessary right. but man would i love to just go delete on that app i would just right. love to get rid of it but it's uh, unfortunately a necessity so the only time i post on there is if i got a gig man i mean i really mm -hmm. try to contain my personal feelings and thoughts and emotions it was hard in june with our um with the riots and everything it was hard not to voice my opinion about that yeah i hate you. and speak up uh but man and especially with this covid stuff too it's been hard not to speak up but um it's you know i, I try to maintain a professional standpoint on that platform too and all my social media i mean just keep it keep it centered on what i do you know because right. that's the main reason i have it like yeah. if i didn't if i wasn't dj and i didn't need to promote and market myself i wouldn't be on these platforms man it's it's too much it's yeah. way too much i it's, hear you yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a television program for everybody you know? oh my god like everybody's, everybody's a star man out their news yeah everybody's a star everybody's yeah. a, everybody's a celebrity now and yeah. it's the weirdest thing in the world man because some people's opinions it's, it's just like okay man you you have your right to say it but it don't make sense to me yeah <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to read it but right right you know but you know what? Just just use it for what you're using it for, man, so people could catch up with you. Yes. And, and see exactly. what the Maddie Mad vibe, you know, see what the, the Maddie Mad vibe is. Ooh, it ain't nothing right now, bro. <laughs> it ain't nothing right now. <laughs> it's Dude. there, dog. Keep doing your thing, man. And thanks a lot for coming on. No worries. Thank you, Greg, for having me, man. Same hey, anytime, man. We'll, we'll connect later on. Yes, sir. All, All right. right.